welcome to the Pre-Post Film Review. I'm Matt Stevenson. And I'm John Asquith. And uh, a belated Happy New Year to everyone. This is the first episode of 2019 for us, Matt. Yes, we're back. Finally. We're back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, any any regular listener, listeners that we have, you know, all two of them, um, <laughs> uh, not including our mums, then uh, you, you may have noticed that we haven't posted uh, an episode since October. Um, which was, I believe, was Mission Impossible was the last film yeah, that we, uh, that was the last we posted one. about. Um, and so we, we just sort of had a lot of uh, sort of work and life commitments come up towards the end of uh, last year. And so we sort of took the Christmas and New Year break to um, reflect on the show a little and, and think about how we wanted to zhuzh it up for 2019. <laughs> and uh, we came up with the motto, New, new Year, New Pod, um, just like New Year, New Me, New Year, New Bod, and all that yep. kind of stuff that people do. New Year's resolution was to reinvigorate the, the podcast. So we've got some new music, which you've heard, and um, we're changing up the format just slightly and, and making um, the pre-section in particular a little more interactive. And we're sort of going to guess a bit more about what the film could have in store mm-hmm. um, and uh, uh, sort of have a, a formula each episode of, you know, what, what we can guess, but we'll, um, we'll sort of get into that in a little bit. Um, the other thing we're introducing is the first little section of our main review will be spoiler free. So we've had, uh, uh, we've, we've had feedback from people that want to listen to the episode, but haven't seen the film. And so they, they just can't listen to any of the episode. Because um, we always jump straight into spoilers, so we ain't doing that no more. No, so we're safe, safe listening for what two thirds of the pod now instead of just half. Yeah, and then mm-hmm. and we'll clearly, clearly indicate when we're going to tip into spoilers in the review section. Yeah, that's right. And that's going to scream for thirty seconds, <laughs> <laughs> and that's your cue. So listen out for that. <laughs> just at the top of your lungs. <laughs> it's a piercing shriek. Yeah, it's like horrifying. <laughs> uh, yeah, so look out for that, everyone. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, it's exciting. I think you know. It's, yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. Re- re- reinvigorated pod, and um, I'm looking forward to, uh, in particular, th- uh, this episode. I think it's going to be an interesting discussion, Matt. Definitely. I think this is a good episode to start a new formula on. And I think, like you said, I mean, we've been doing the pod now, John, for what, like four, maybe almost five years. So yeah, it's been a while. It's like, it's, it feels good to have a bit of a, you know, step back, look at it, rethink some things and have a bit more fun with it. I'm excited yep. for this year. I think it's going to be a good year for the pod. Yep. I agree. It's, it's definitely not a midlife crisis for the pod. <laughs> no, of course not. <laughs> no. <laughs> Um, um, well, this episode, what are we going to be chatting about? Ah, uh, yes, this episode, we are going to be talking about M. Night Shyamalan's new film, Glass. I probably should have said up front, if there's any new listeners, the way things work here is... <laughs> the, um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> always Jesus. good to leave the explanation of the podcast. Yeah, well, we, we took a step back, thought minutes, about the yeah. pod, come back for the new year and fucked it up straight away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. That is one rule we put in place. We're going to fuck it up. Um, no, the way, the, uh, the way we do things here is we talk about a film over two time periods, Matt. And we, uh, we record a, a little section after we've watched the trailer and we make uh, predictions and... Um, in uh, this new format, we're predicting um, the opening shot of the film, the closing shot, uh, the general plot line, and also um, whatever sort of thoughts and expectations we have um, mm-hmm. about the film. Uh, and then we come back and we record a full review after we've seen the movie. Um, and that first section of, of that review is spoiler-free now, which is cool. Um, but that's, that's generally the format of the show for anyone mm-hmm. new that's listening. And um, yeah, welcome. We love you. Yeah, cool. So uh, here are our trailer impressions for Glass. Maybe this will all make sense if I explain who I am. My name is Dr. Ellie Staple, and I'm a psychiatrist. My work concerns a particular type of delusion of grandeur. It's a growing field. 
I specialize in those individuals who believe they are superheroes. <laughs> Good for you. Okay, John, we've just watched the trailer for M. Night Shyamalan's new film, Glass, the third film, I guess, in the Unbreakable trilogy? I don't know what he's called yeah. it, to be honest, yeah. but who ever thought we'd be sitting here talking about a trilogy of Unbreakable films? Crazy. I know. It is. Um, so the trailer's out. The film's called Glass. Uh, we just watched it. What are your thoughts? I think this looks pretty good, Matt. Um, I am a huge fan of Unbreakable. I think that's a very underrated M. Night film, although getting more recognition as time goes on. Mm -hmm. I was very pleasantly surprised by Split. Um, I thought that was very solid, sort of... I think we talked about that as a bit of a comeback film for M. Night. um, Yep. Because he made a few clangers along the way there. (laughs) Sure did. Um, (laughs) And coming off the success of Split, he's obviously decided to keep riding that wave and finish off that story and stay in that universe and go straight on to Glass, which is what every film nerd has sort of been waiting for, I guess. You hear that a lot, like, oh, they're finally doing it. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I am. I think this feels like it has more in common with Split than it does with Unbreakable. It seems to be a continuation of that, more that world and that type of storytelling, which, you know, mm. there's a big gap in, in M. Night's career and the way I think he writes and directs now. Um, I actually think it's not as good now as it used to be. Um, and so, he, therefore, the worlds of his films feel a little different, and I think this is closer to Split. You know, it's hard to tell from a trailer, obviously. Maybe I'm just saying that because it's got... Um, the Beast and all the different personalities yeah, McAvoy, and stuff in yeah. it. Yeah, James McAvoy. Um, but yeah, I'm excited. You know, my, my, my hopes are reasonably high. I, th- I think I'm not expecting it to be blown away, but I think it could be as good as Split, which was very enjoyable. Had, had some really great moments in it and some signs of, of um, the M. Night of old with long takes and building dread and things like that. Mm. Um that's really what I'm hoping for is another slow paced um, psychological thriller It looks like there's some action stuff in here, but again, it looks fairly toned down and uh, quote unquote, like realistic, which I like about this, that that people don't fly around. They just, Mm. it's extensions of what we can physically do as humans. That's sort of their powers Uh, aside from, I guess from um, David Dunn's ability to like, see things mentally like see yeah. he has to touch someone to see if they're like a good or a bad person yeah. um uh yeah so I, i'm you know expecting maybe a seven out of ten film here um i I'm, I'm really excited but i have been burnt a lot by m night before so we'll see if it's as good as split i'll be very happy and i think that's a nice tidy little um yeah tri- trilogy those are my uh general expectations what about you matt uh, yeah, I'm very, very excited. I think I'm perhaps a little bit more excited about this than you, John. I think, in fact, I was probably a little bit higher on Split than you were. Yeah, I think so. Serves. Yeah. Um, I think I, I, my sort of journey with M. Night has been a little bit more up and down. Like I, I was quite sour on the visit, which I think you were quite high on. That was one of our mm. few disagreements on the pod. Um, mm. So to me, Split was like the return to form for Shyamalan. And in particular, I mean, I agree that it doesn't reach the heights of his earlier work and he doesn't seem to have the confidence or that sort of like slow Spielbergian mm. style that he used to. And uh, I, a lot of my love for Split admittedly does come from that surprise ending because that is still like one of the greatest moments I've ever had in a cinema. Like I still remember that fondly of just blew my mind like I wanted to stand up in my seat and just like yell like I've never had that experience <laughs> before in a cinema and I probably never will again like it was just it's such a rare occurrence um so that I think that maybe unfairly elevated the film higher than perhaps it would have without it but I think it's genuinely quite a good film mm. interesting perhaps a little ham-fisted in retrospect in terms of some of its portrayals of like abuse and things but I think its heart's in the right place and it it's yeah. just like a solid little thriller um, so yeah, I'm very excited about this. It's like you said, it's kind of like, it's 
the trilogy we never dreamed would happen. <laughs> you know, mm. like yeah. it, for decades. I don't know when did Unbreakable come out. It's been so long in the making. Yeah. Like he, Actually, to be fair, I don't... Uh, maybe you can answer this question, John, but I'm not sure if he always envisioned this as a trilogy. I know that he always wanted a sequel to Unbreakable, which is why Split was such a explosive experience at the end. I'm unsure whether it was always a trilogy. Do you know if that's the case or not? I don't know. Yeah, all I know is that he did have a sequel idea, and then I'm right. not sure whether this came from the success of Split or whether gotcha. it was always mulling over in his head. I'm not sure. But I mean, this is the potential of this is to like live up to the promise of that final shot of Split, right? Like, I mean, mm. the only thing that makes Split a sequel is Bruce Willis st- sitting in a cafe at the end. And this glass is then the culmination of those two worlds combined. So... I'm very excited for that. I mean, I want to see more of Bruce Willis's character. I, I'm in complete agreement with you that Unbreakable is a, a, one of his more underrated films. It's one of my favourite of his films. Yeah. Um, so I'm very, very uh, keen to see more of David Dunn and mm. Samuel L. Jackson's character as well. So, mm. um, so yeah, I guess uh, what that boils down to is I'm super excited very very excited yeah. for this yeah i think um hearing you say that stuff made me think of another point that um in this day and age of marvel movies and superhero films everywhere what i like about these films is that they're completely different they're, they're nothing like those it's yeah. original idea and it's really grounded and not even grounded in a christopher nolan dark knight way i mean th- th- these are very low-key like the cast of four or five people really yeah. for the most part um and i really like that i think we need something like that to offset the big spectacle of say a marvel film yeah and i mean like the the quote unquote powers of the characters are almost non-existent it's like mm. you know someone has multiple personality disorder and is like pretty muscly i mean i guess yeah. it goes split does go in his kind of supernaturally like he can He'd the climb beast walls can stuff. climb walls, but I guess yeah. you know he almost explain that away by just like he's good at mm. rock climbing, you know. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. Like, yeah. I, don't, I guess David Dunn also does. He can like physically like see people's, you know, the uh, crimes people have committed by touching them. So it's not like obviously they they do have supernatural powers, but it's so subtle and so low key. It's like you said, it's yeah. just unlike anything else, especially That's in right. the the market today when we're so fucking saturated with. Um, Marvel. If anything, I suppose that would be the only ding I would give this, or the only mark against it is that it just feels a little bit. I'm. Um, it's a product of inevitability, right? Like he could never get it off the ground until superhero films were the only thing anyone wants to make. So then, of course, people want to make his superhero films. You know, um, it's so it's almost at a time where I'm the least interested in superhero films. <laughs> Mm. Um, which is a bit of a shame. But having said that, like I said, if I'm going to watch a superhero film, I'd much prefer to see this than yeah. yet another Marvel film, I guess, yeah. is what it boils mm. down to. Yeah, totally agree. Okay, Matt, well, shall we move on to our new little segment? Yeah, let's do it. Let's make some da, da, probably da, 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 da. entirely wrong, laughable predictions. Super yeah, specific. <laughs> yeah. All right, off the bat, first one, uh, mm. opening shot. What do we think the opening shot of Glass will be? Oh, that's a very good point. It's not a point. It's a question. <laughs> <laughs> Screwing it up already. Um, oh, man. I think the first shot of Glass is going to be a hallway <laughs> with... A hallway in the asylum. A hallway with, like, a door at the end of it. Right. That's my guess. That's my guess. They're, they're, I'm, I'm assuming that they're locked up at the start of the film and that it, we're going to fade into, like, a long hallway and there's, like, a, a door at the end of it with, like, a cage in front or something Interesting. like that. Interesting. Yeah, I... That's my guess. I like it. I would go something similar, but I think it's going to be more specific. I think, given that the film... I was almost going to say it will start open on David Dunn, given that he's the mm. one we haven't seen. It, it split closed on him, and we'll open on him. But oh, I think yeah. I think 
it's not going to do that. I think it's going to open on Samuel because I think the film's called Glass. I think it might yeah. be a slow reveal. It might be like a corridor or a room, a pan across the room, or it'd be like an intro mm. to him, and you'll see his like wheelchair, wheelchair. or something like w- mm. roll into frame or something. Yeah, but I think it's. But I think cool. you're you're right in that it'll be a slow, some sort of slow opening. It won't be like a bombastic, big explosion or anything. It'll be. Low I don't key. think so. Yeah. 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 No, I agree with that. Um, okay, okay. So, closing shot. Closing shot. All right. So if we're opening on Samuel, I think it's going to close mm. on Bruce Willis. I mean, yeah. it's it's you know, it's his thing. story, right? We're going for Unbreakable to Glass. It's going to end on him having defeated the beast and mm-hmm. locked up glass again or whatever. I don't know. He's going to like yeah. put his he's going to put his hood up on his raid gun. Yes. And yep. Walk walk off into the raid. <laughs> yep. That, that, honestly, that's exactly what I was imagining. Oh, him, there we go. From, from, from behind him yeah. in his his raincoat, over either overlooking the city or yeah, walking off or something like that. Yeah. That would be um, a nice... The, the nice most game. understated, like, superhero costume ever that he... You know, which is a, <laughs> yeah, a green poncho. raincoat. Yeah, yeah exactly. a poncho. Um, yeah, uh, I think, yeah, it's got to end with uh, Bruce Willis, yeah. I mean, yeah, that's that's the obvious choice. Okay, we're in mm. lockstep there. Okay, then what about, just in general, give me mm. the, like, the three acts, like, the general beats of the film. Okay. What do you think the story's going to be about, I guess? Yeah, okay. The the general beats, I think, are they're all locked up at the start. Um, glass and the Beast team up, and a Glass uses the Beast to get out of the asylum, uh, which mean, when David Gunn finds out, he uses his super strength to, to bash down the door, which we see in the trailer. Yeah, see that in the trailer. Yep. So I'm assume, assuming that's when he gets out. Um, then it's a bit of a chase to find them. He, he has to like walk the streets, um, uh, to find them. And, uh, when he finally does, we're in the third act and there's some sort of battle between him and the beast. Uh, the beast is like the only other person that can actually potentially beat him. Uh, he almost dies in some water, just like in the first film. Yeah. And, uh, then somehow he wins and, um, I don't think Glass will die. I think maybe he'll be locked up again. But potentially the Beast will be so out of control that he'll he'll accidentally kill him in a rage or something like that. Anyway, somehow Glass ends up being taken care of and then David Dunn walks into the city and um, somehow the psychologist doesn't care that he's <laughs> out. <laughs> um, the psychologist is clearly going to realise that they actually do have powers as well. But, yeah. That's my prediction. What do you think, Matt? Um, I I like your prediction. I think... I don't think it starts in the asylum. I think... David Dunn finds out that they're in the asylum and get, like, somehow needs to get himself into mm. the asylum. Like, there's, there, there's a okay. prelude to that, I feel like. And we learn yeah. more about what David's been doing... For, True. We do for see like, that in the, in the trailer, yeah. I feel like we but don't I'm, know anything I'm, I'm, about I'm, him. Yeah. I'm thinking that the stuff is flashback. Flashbacks. He's talking, Interesting. Talking to her. Yeah. Okay. Well, I I think that we get an act before that, and then they get yeah. into the asylum, and yeah. then I think you're probably right. Like for some some they have to break out. So some more ease. Somehow glass mm. tricks. They're actually yeah. Glass tricks the beast into breaking them out, and then I agree. There's like some sort of showdown. There's like that looks like there's, there's like a cityscape. You know, he. Mm. I agree that he's pursuing them. I think that's almost like the promise that was made at the end of Split, right? Is that he he has to hunt them down or hunt the beast yeah. down. But now yeah. the beast has glass helping mm. him. He's got the brains mm. of glass to like try and yeah. help him escape. Um, uh, and I agree. I think glass. I think you're right. The glass will die in the end. If mm. somehow in the final altercation. I think maybe I don't know what beast's weak the beast's weakness is. So maybe, no. maybe um, David ter- like turns his own weakness on the beast and drowns the beast. Like over, it's just like him overcoming his water. Ah, yes. And kill- kills the beast in water and then puts his mm. raincoat on and walks off into the yeah rain. Yep. Okay. And <laughs> I like it. Do you think surprise prediction? 
Do you think yeah. there's going to be a twist, given that it's a Shyamalan film? And uh, if so, what I... would the twist be? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was, I was not planning on that. No, I don't think there will be. I think there will be, and I think the psychologist is going to have powers. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that would be a twist, yeah. <laughs> what, what would the power be? Yeah, I don't know. She's like she can mind control them or something. Something with her mind. That's why she's a psychologist. Oh right? yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Look, it's like in, telepathy. Yeah, I, can, I can kind of see that. Yeah, yeah. Right. I, I don't. Go I don't on. think it's going to happen. Bring it on, M Night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> hmm. All right. Well, that's it for our predictions, Matt. Yeah. And uh, I'm really excited to jump forward in time. And oh, um, I can't wait. You know, hear what our future selves think of this film. Let's and how uh, how wrong how we wrong were. we are. <laughs> yeah, exactly. How yeah. embarrassing this just was. <laughs> yeah, yeah these, everything will be really off. <laughs> oh, I love it. Uh, that's what it's all about. David Dunn, the only person to survive that train wreck all those years ago. What do you do? I'm in security. You think you have superpowers? It's a feeling. Vision. I have to touch them. You believe you are a protector. All right, John, we've both now seen Glass. Uh, this is going to be a little spoiler free chat, uh, general impressions of the film. So I'm super, super curious. Um, what did you think? Did it live up to the its predecessors, Unbreakable and Split? Hmm. That is a good question, Matt. Um,. I think that this film is pretty okay. <laughs> I had reasonably high hopes, um, as we talked about in the, in the trailer section. Um, and for the first third, I mean, we're, we're, I won't go into spoilers yet, but for the first third, I was pretty much on board. I thought, yeah, this, this is doing what I want it to do. Um, it's, it feels... It feels like it's meshing Unbreakable and Split quite well. Um, and then I found the movie really grinds to a halt when they get into the um, uh, insane asylum. And um, uh, without saying much more, it spends a lot of time there. And um, it sort of starts to break apart around around that point and, and gets steadily worse, I think. And so by the end, um, any I, I wasn't angry or um severely disappointed or anything like that but i was just not really on board by the end of it um and so that was just sort of like you know on a graph that's like a steady decline of my yeah. interest in the film um i admire m night for just you know he, doing what he does which is like the, these strange kind of wacky offbeat films now with you know odd senses of, uh, sorry with an odd sense of humor and um you know character motivation that doesn't quite make sense but kind of does and sometimes he'll put theme so far forward that the the actions or whatever the characters are actually saying doesn't really make sense no one would actually talk that way mm. um i i admire all that stuff but it doesn't mean i enjoy it all the time and i i i like the guts you know that it took for him to make this and just you know go for broke but I can't say I particularly enjoyed a lot of it. There's some inventive shots. There was a few hints here and there of the the M Night of um, yesteryear, wh mm. who was a um, you know brilliant um, br brilliant at composition and, and cinematography and telling story visually. But there's not enough of that. I was I was overall kind of disappointed in the way it was shot as well. Um, so yeah, la largely disappointed. But I didn't hate it and. Um, yeah, I, I admire what it's going for, I suppose. <laughs> um, <laughs> they're, they're, they're kind of my general thoughts. I, I did only see it today, um, so I, I'm still processing. Still processing. But I, I, yeah. I don't think my opinion will change that much. If anything, it, it may even go down as the days goes on. Days go on. Um, but um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm curious what you think, Matt. I mean, we, we we're generally always on the same page. Mm. If I had to do a, a pre-post on your <laughs> reaction. I would say um, that you're probably more negative than me, that it, that it actively annoyed you. But um, let's see. What, what do you got? Um, you know me too well, John. It yeah. did actively annoy me. That is very true. Okay. Um, I, didn't, yeah. I didn't 
hate this film. I think I'm I'm similar. I had a similar experience to you, but it definitely sounds like I enjoyed it a lot less than you did overall. Um, I kind of agree with you in that I was on board at the beginning. Even just like the sort of the way it starts and it feels quite low key and you know mm. shot on these like streets in the city and it just reminded me of like the nineties or something, you know, they don't, you don't really see films of that middle budget sort of mm. not showy, yeah, like, and I was like really into that. Um, but whoo boy, howdy, like the longer it goes on, the just less interested I got. And you're so right about it. Just stopping dead. Like this film has like zero momentum for the most of it. It's kind of mind boggling why he chose to do like, tell the story like he did it's just it's just so uninteresting for the most part um and we can go into more detail i suppose in spoilers but it's, it sort of seems to like tread water and rehash old ground that we already know yeah. about all the characters it's just very very strange um and i totally agree about the theme like it i one i sort of actively dislike the theme that it's going for um i think it it's sort of expanding on an idea that was part of Unbreakable, which I always felt was the weakest part of Unbreakable and kind of chose to read it in Unbreakable as more of like a metaphor and not a literal, you know, concept within the world. I'm trying to be vague, I suppose, so that we don't spoil anything. Mm. Um, mm. Whereas this, this particularly in just terms of comic books, I suppose, and what comic books mean to the world. And this just leans so heavily into that that it yeah. becomes farcical, I think. Like, mm. it's laughable. And it, the way it treats it so seriously just does not work. Um, and I I would even go as far to say, is like, this didn't actively damage Unbreakable for me, but I think it did split. And I think it's... Looking back now, it seems... Like, Split now feels more like it was never a part of the Unbreakable world and was just another film with David Dunn slapped on the end. And then th this doesn't feel like it gels those two worlds to me. It feels much more in the Split world than it does the Unbreakable world. Um, it, it just it highlighted to me that it just... that it did, the, Putting those two together doesn't work, I don't think. Um, so, yeah, I, I was very, very disappointed. And I was, like, super excited for this. I potentially thought this was his, you know, big chance to you know knock it out of the park we've been wanting this for so long i was so disappointed john so disappointed i was like just shaking my head in the cinema how like how did you fuck it up so badly <laughs> i mean he, it was all there it was handed to him and he finally had this you know thing that he'd been dreaming of doing for years you yep. know great idea like and you know we we rag on superhero films a lot on this pod and i think we mentioned it in the trailer as well I like the idea of this kind of grounded, mm, small scale, yep. you know, quote unquote superhero film that's not really a superhero film. I think that's a really good idea, but I don't know. He just fumbled it so badly. I don't know. It was super, super disappointing. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I think we're largely in the, in the same boat with this one. Um, it, it is very interesting. Um, the career of, of M night, like, that th this was his rise again, and it it, it is making um, quite a lot of money, so yeah, he'll, that's true. he'll be able to do what he wants next. But I, I worry, I'm I'm sort of permanently worried now that he just <laughs> has lost it a bit. You know, like there's there's always hints of the of the old M Night, but there just something something's happened to him. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, seriously, just, it's um yeah, it's quite quite baffling. Um, but I, I suppose part of that is. Uh, that he, this was totally his film and um, he self-financed it and had mm. complete creative control. And that was sort of the problem that he had the first time around before he sort of um, went down in everyone's um, evaluation as a director and then seemed to be coming back and having learned lessons with the visit, split, and we would assume glass. But Again, I think it's sort of gone to his head, having creative control and knowing that everyone was looking forward to this. I think, um, I don't know. I don't, yeah, it just, <clears throat> it's, it's just strange to me that he could mess it up so much. Yeah, it just, it also just seems like a big pile of fucking nothing. Like, why, 
you had this opportunity, I, and like I think we talked about this. Trailer. I have no idea if this was a long term plan to make a larger story. I mean, you, you, the Beast was what essentially part of the first drafts of the first film or whatever. But like, if this was his master plan, like yes, what exactly? Like, what, what? Why? What's the point? Just don't make it. Like you know what I mean? Yeah, like you could have gone so agree. many other things. It seems like, especially given how much, like you said, how much creative control he had, he could have done anything. And he told yeah. he chose to tell this like yeah. it's so <laughs> weird like it's just yeah. it's, it's such yeah, a yeah. big nothing yeah. burger like yeah you bang on what's the point? Yeah, that, that's such a good point I it's, it's it suggests to me that this third chapter was definitely not in his head the whole mm. time and that split did well because he, he it was like a reasonably good thriller and then with this big twist on the end and so he's rushed into this. Quite soon after. I mean, when mm. was Split? Was that last year even or the year before? Yeah, a couple of years ago maybe. Yeah. Yeah, like very, very recent that this this follow-up went into production. Um, and it, it, it kind of feels a bit like that. Like it, it's he's just riding the wave that he got on Split. And it's like, okay, now I can – everyone wants this. Everyone, Well, everyone thinks they want this, so I'm going to give it to them. Um, but sort of rush into it, not really plan it out properly and um, – it, it just feels like that. And and um, I agree that it, it's, aside from the opening, which I liked, it does feel more like Split split Part 2 with mm. David Dunn kind of yeah. just in there. Um, you know, having said that, I, I think uh, what we do get of um, the Elijah Price character, played by Samuel L. Jackson, for the most part feels authentic and feels like the same character to me um particularly in the when we see his little schemes and plans without giving anything away i thought that was that was quite good but um david dunn feels different to me doesn't doesn't feel like the same character the Mm. same mood um and james mcavoy does a great you know his performance is amazing the way he switches so seamlessly And, and in some of the there's a really cool take again without spoiling that's quite long where he's switching like almost every mm. second and it's just very very impressive to watch but i'm not i never feel really anything about that character i'm not particularly scared of the beast sometimes it's quite silly i think um and you get a little laugh out of some of the personalities but it's it's also it, I, th- I feel like it's played too much that he's switching and by the end when he when all the personalities are switching uh, again, without spoiling anything, I was like, okay, I, like, I've got this. I, I, it's yeah. not interesting to me anymore. Um, and so it's sort of over, as much as I love his performance, it sort of overstays its welcome, I think. Um, yeah, I would agree with that. I think McAvoy's the best thing in it, but I agree maybe they, they sort of lean a bit too hard into the, the multiple personality thing. It's interesting to me that you found Elijah's character consistent. I, that was one thing that I found very inconsistent. I felt like, and maybe this is my me misremembering Unbreakable, though I feel like I watched it like fairly recently, a year or so ago. But to me, my memory of Elijah in Unbreakable, um, I mean, I guess spoilers for Unbreakable, and I'll try not to spoil anything here, but when it's revealed that he's the baddie in Unbreakable... Um, I felt like it, he wasn't a fucking genius mastermind. He was just a terrorist that was like using. Mm. He put a bomb on a train, and he like yeah, fair point. His, his power wasn't a power in that sense. His power was he was the inverse of David. His bones were brittle. Like it, it yes, he mm. was a smart dude. But I feel like in this, he's like mm. fucking mastermind, mega genius that can somehow get out of rooms magically like i don't know i just didn't buy that at all yeah um yeah that's a very good point matt and you're making me reconsider what i said (laughs) but i think it's also it's also the tone of the film too like unbreakable is so grounded like maybe he was meant to be more intelligent than your average person but everything is so muted in a good way like and really low-key whereas everything in split and then subsequently glass is much more heightened like super yeah superheroes are literally superheroes basically you know yeah like... it, def- it definitely uh, yeah i suppose we should get into spoilers soon on on that note but yeah i i think there's a there's a moment where he he is analyzing without giving anything away it's analyzing um the the kind of shift work around the asylum mm. and how much time he has to do something and 
that's one that's sort of an early introduction to him and i i found that sort of the analytical side and the right. the planning to be i was like oh that feels like the same character to me right but you you you're completely right that it's heightened in this the whole thing is um yeah so i think yeah i, I feel like we're getting close to spoilers here so maybe yeah. you know we should wrap up this spoiler free section by saying that yep. we're both disappointed um yeah. perhaps, perhaps you slightly more so matt um mm-hmm. and we i would say you can I, I i wouldn't rush out to see this at the theater if no. you're listening I, i'd probably watch it at home there's nothing particularly cinematic about it unfortunately that's worth seeing on the big screen um and the story is quite disappointing and sometimes infuriating so yeah i mean it's if nothing else it's a curiosity right and it's like fascinating yeah. to see just the work of m night and this weird bizarre trilogy even if it doesn't work and it's not particularly good it's interesting yeah in its own it is way. yeah like, i'll always see a film that he puts out because you just yeah. never know what to expect <laughs> it's a fucking wild card yeah yeah um all right so let's uh jump into spoilers and address our predictions matt and see yes. uh, what we got Can't right wait. and what we got wrong All right, so let's uh, let's run through our predictions quickly, John. Yes. Um, all right, so Exciting. let's start with opening shots. Did you get that correct? I don't think you did. <laughs> uh, no, but I- I'll give myself like a tiny bit of credit here in that it was there. It, there was a doorway, and I did so say. So let's, let's sorry. Let's just back up. Can you tell okay. us what the opening yeah. shot was? Okay, so I, yeah, my prediction was uh, the a long a long hallway in the asylum with a door door at the end of it, probably yep. with some bars or something on it. Split or uh, split uh, glass opens with a uh, it's in the warehouse where um, Kram is keeping like the cheerleaders or whatever, cheerleaders on, and yep. it's a it's a door a dark doorway with like a grimy wall around it, and he like slowly walks into frame. And so it's not it's not really close, but I, I you, feel you like you had a door know, involved. The, yeah. the doorway, you know, this is like um, you know, cold, cold reading or talking to the dead. Like I'm, I just get images in my head. You know, it's like I, they have to be interpreted. So I saw a doorway, and um, I'll give myself like half a point for that. I think. Yeah. Well, you're much closer than me. I think I was predicting that we'd see uh, Elijah. It would open with a slow shot on. Elijah. I agree that it would be show, slow, but I thought it would be an intro to Elijah, given that it's titled Glass. So I was way off on that yeah i think I, I wish it was that to be honest um i think that that would have been better than what we got i found the opening to be i don't know a little just didn't didn't feel quite right to me that opening yeah. scene was, um yeah it was, it was, uh, uh um, okay so what else we had the closing uh, shot. closing shot so what was the closing shot yeah, yeah so the closing shot is the sort of family members slash friends of the of the main character sitting in the uh, train station and there the footage is going viral and the camera pulls back and um you know everyone's checking out their phones and w- watching the news Getting spread. messages but, yeah yeah superheroes are real um yeah. we both got that very wrong actually. <laughs> so it couldn't have been further from what yeah. actually happened i never <laughs> never would have even come close to predicting that that no the way. movie ends with with things going viral <laughs> Um, yeah, we both predicted that what uh, David Dunham walk off into the rain with his raincoat. So yeah, not yeah even close. Close, no. He uh, he dead. He dead. He certainly is. Yeah. Um, okay, okay. So then so the last thing we predicted was the story arc, general the plot. Yeah, general plot beats. So, uh, how did you go with that? Were you close? Yeah. Well, I think we we were similar on this um and this is like this we can chat this and then obviously go into yeah, like this spoilers good. because this kind of leads into it right yeah uh, we basically had the same thing except um i said that it would begin in the um asylum and then they'd break out yeah there'd be maybe a bit of cat and mouse and then a final conflict um and you basically had that as well except that we would start with david dunn out on the street yeah all right yeah, yeah. so I feel like you were pretty, I was kind of pretty bang on with the yeah. with the beginning. I mean, I guess, yeah, I guess so. I feel like at least I predicted towards the end there'd be like a bit more of a showdown. Like there was shots of the cityscape in the trailer, which 
I mean, there is a bit of a showdown, but it's like in the fucking garden of the yeah insane asylum. Yeah. Um, yeah. So really? it yeah. didn't really live up to the at least what in my mind what I was sort of predicting. But I guess the general arc of the film, we, we were pretty close. Yeah. Um, and we also talked about if there'd be a twist. Oh yeah, I had a surprise prediction, didn't I? A special prediction that mm. I predicted that the the um, psychologist would have superpowers, which did not happen. Yeah, <laughs> but there was a twist, <laughs> I guess. Um, yeah, and involving her too. So yeah. you, you're kind of close there because I think uh, I yeah. said that there's there won't be anything. Yeah, just you... sort of wrap up. Um, and yeah, I was wrong about that. So, I mean, may- maybe if we just jump straight into that towards the end there, what did you think of this sort of... Okay, so there's like kind of like two things, right? There's One is that the psychologist is part of some group that just doesn't like superheroes and keeps yeah. them silent or not believing in themselves or something. Yeah. I-, I mean, I really, <laughs> really disliked that. Same. I thought that was yeah. really it's so dumb. silly. Yeah, just like that. That I know we're in a in a semi, you know, heightened fantasy world or whatever. But that it, that just seemed it make, doesn't make any sense to me. Like, how did they <laughs> how did they get the mansion? How did she stop the cops from shooting them at the start of the movie? Like, yeah, all of it, just the logistics of it don't make any sense to me. And I always think it's silly when like a club all have like they all have that tattoo. All have little tattoos. Yeah. Yeah, like. It, Oh, it's just yeah, that's that's really silly. I mean, did you... no, yeah, I'm exactly same, right? the same. It's just dumb, and I mean, I didn't even understand the twist at first. Like the first when you know he's no. she's like holds her hand out for him to touch her, so you think there's yeah. going to be some big reveal, and it plays it like a big reveal, and it's just like it a does, restaurant, yeah. and everyone goes weirdly quiet, and I was like, what the fuck is even happening? <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. It's just yeah. Out of context, it made no sense. I genuinely yeah. thought I missed something. Like I was like, was that meant to be the twist? Like I just didn't understand mm. at first. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And then you're right. Once they do kind of explain it, just the logistics of it are just dumb and like. I don't know. I just... What is it? It doesn't really add anything, I think. No, like, nothing. The, the, the idea is that she she made them question themselves and then they had to believe to, to sort of, you know, at the end. So particularly David Dunn had to believe to, like, get out of the, his yeah. cell or whatever. But, but you could just do that with just her being a psychologist, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it adds nothing to the plot, really, or the theme. Yeah. It's yeah. just sort of a pointless twist or pointless you know idea to try and have a twist at the end that doesn't work yeah you know, i totally agree and i think you know i've seen interviews with m knight where he says he doesn't want to he's not the twist guy and he doesn't want to be known as that but this feels like he made the decision not because it was organic but because he wanted to like slip something in there totally yeah like it, it, that's boggles my mind that he claims that he doesn't want to be the twist guy because he it's like there's no need for it other than to have a twist like he's it's just mm. infuriating yeah and then so the second thing which is it's not really a twist it's more like the first film i suppose where you find out that elijah had sort of masterminded this yes. um this, this footage to to go out online basically or, or to be sent to like the, yeah. those people specifically and then they post it or something like that i don't know yeah it was like some weird like secret internet like dark web thing yeah. wasn't it like some yeah like yeah. it's sent somewhere something secure like or whatever and then it went got released virally or yeah whatever by then. yeah which i guess he can like hack stuff really quickly there's that one scene where he's like gets in and hacks stupid and the text is moving so quickly on the screen like the world's <laughs> fastest typer um people laughed in the cinema it was just it's just like just slow it down he doesn't have to be riding a million miles an hour <laughs> that's so funny um yeah did that did that work for you at all to me it, again it didn't like it felt like a rehash like you said of the unbreakable twist and it was yeah. at that point it's like what i was saying a bit earlier that i just didn't buy that elijah was this super human yeah. genius mastermind it all felt a bit mm. silly um mm. yeah, yeah i mean it, it sat better with me than the other one Mm. Um, you know that he he gets the last laugh, sort of. I think that's... at least it comes from a place of character and stuff. You exactly, know, it fits more organically into the film. Yeah, and it, it fits with his sort of his idea of yeah. like wanting to prove that that, that this is a real thing. Um, so it kind of works in, in that sense. Um, yeah. 
So uh, the, the other thing that happens at the end, Matt, is um, that everyone dies. Uh, what, what did you think of all that sort oh, of stuff? He drowned in a fucking puddle. What a pathetic yeah. ending. Like, yeah. I, I was so dumbfounded and angry. I was just... Like, yeah. that... Actually, I said earlier that it didn't damage Unbreakable. That, it doesn't damage the film, but it's just like, yeah. again, it's like, what's the fucking point? If honestly, it's if this is your story... To his character. And yeah. he gets drowned in a puddle. Like, it's... Yeah. And what was really off-putting to me was not even by an interesting character. No, it was like... like... A, a mercenary or whatever with well, a tattoo on his a head. A nameless person just holds his face yeah. in a puddle. <laughs> like... Yeah. And like the, the, the geography of that and where, you know, presumably the son saw that happening. He was there. Yeah. But no one, no one, no one reacts to it. He's just dead. And then the son comes over and is like really sad. And like, that he, I guess he pushes a guard, mm. but I don't, I don't understand what, what the, that that it, most of that sequence actually for me, I found all the the people watching on and the like reactions and things like that just didn't make sense and it all felt very disjointed to me. I thought that was not not handled very well. That that last sort of you know quote unquote action mm. climax sequence. Yeah, that's interesting. I I don't remember specifics, but I think you're probably right. I mean, that all just sort of adds together to make it feel not very climactic, you know, like it's not very well put together. Like uh, mm. it, they build up this weird like cityscape and there's that tower as if there's going to be some huge showdown and then do nothing yeah. with it. Like it's, yeah, it's, it's odd. It, it's like setting you up specifically to disappoint you. It's so weird. Yeah. Like, and I, I think that, 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 that is it. I think, he is subverting, trying to subvert a superhero cliche there that, well, we're going to go to this big building mm. in the middle of a city and have like a big explosive finale um, and then purposely sort of leaves it in the background there, like literally in that cityscape in the background yeah. and has them fight, fight way away, way far away. Also, this was kind of a low budget film. So yes. they probably could, just couldn't afford to do that anyway. Yes, that's But it, it is strange. The... the the amount of setup that that <laughs> yeah. tower gets, like it, it does, it doesn't even really even need a setup. No. Like, just say, I, I, "Hey, I'm going to go in the city and like blow some shit up." I, it's I don't just know why. Like, yeah, it's constantly and like in the background. TV of, yeah. and ra- like, and then it's like, oh yes, it's like really interesting. The whole world's going to be watching. It's like it's just a building. <laughs> So like weird. I guess, I guess ha- it had like weird solar panels on it yeah. or something like that. Like th- that's why people were gonna watch the opening. It, but it just—it's one of these weird M Night things that he he has done later in his career, where it's like no one, the real world doesn't w- work that way. I, I know yeah. we're not quite in the real world, but like people don't react to buildings opening up. Like that. It's just <laughs> such a it's such a strange thing. Yeah, and I mean that's a good point. I think you're right about him wanting to subvert certain s- superhero cliches but and I, I'm all for that I think that's uh, you know a good uh, objective to have but it, you need to do something clever with it you know what I mean like like, like you said there's no th- there's so much set up to it and just not doing it isn't enough like that feels just just yeah. like a pointless letdown Inst- and mm. you know if you're going to subvert it subvert it do something interesting with it or like take us in a different direction in some creative way instead of just drop it like yeah it's i would agree with that because it's not it's not like okay you you're not going to get a big action set piece at the end instead what i'm going to give you is like a nice character moment but yeah. actually what he replaces it with is just some poor action instead, yeah it tries you know? to give it's us like, the same like violent showdown cathartic showdown yeah but just yeah and it's, not it's just very not well done. very well done <laughs> no but you know you know to to be fair before we get too negative there are um a couple of action sequences which i thought were were quite well done Mm -hmm. um uh, one at the start of the film um when david dunn and and the beast have a little bit of a showdown in in the warehouse um there's it's only brief but um the beast is like throwing a big wooden table around yeah and i thought that was just a really nice simple way of of showcasing strength Mm -hmm. Um, which is something that all three of these films have done quite well is like these simple feats uh, are they're just a bit more than what a a normal human could do and I I like that 
Um, and the other is, uh, and this felt like sort of a classic Shyamalan shot, is when Elijah and um, the Horde are, are escaping um, the asylum and uh, the security comes up to them and they come up to uh, Kevin Wendell Crumb. I, I, I'm calling him a different name every time, but I guess that kind of makes sense, right? <laughs> yeah, it's appropriate. Uh, they come up to him and Elijah just keeps wheeling forward and then out of oh, focus yes, in the background, I that in my notes he just starts yep. beating the shit out of the guys and it's quite impressive like um, stunt work as well. He's like doing flips and like really like throwing them really far and I thought that was um, just a really nice shot and it goes for quite a while and gets more and more out of focus and yep. um, it, you know I love that kind of stuff and that's what M. Night used to do so well yeah no I totally agree with that That I specifically had that shot noted down um, yeah that I, I would agree with that I think it, I mean I guess they're, they're probably the only really other action scenes in the film other than the showdown um, but yeah that's the one that I think works the most the others for me were you know take it or leave it and then or actively kind of bad towards the end um uh did you have anything else that you liked like you said before we sort of rip into it any further it'd be good to get some positives yeah. out um no i got to think yeah I'm sure uh, that one. i did yeah. like that um i liked that they got the same actors back like the son from oh that was amazing yeah i didn't know that 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 he was going to be in it yeah um, me either and and it like it's the same dude that that's really cool yeah yeah, I thought that was really good. It took me like a little while for it to like the penny to drop, like because uh, he's, he's sort of like quite unique looking, and I hadn't sort of seen him in anything since probably Unbreakable, and I was like, it just like took me a minute. And once I realised that it was actually the kid from the first film, I was very impressed with. That. Yeah, yeah, and I don't know if he is has been acting the whole time or not, but he gives it like a solid performance yeah. in this as well. I thought Definitely. he was quite good. Mm. Um, and I did. I guess there is sort of like as much as I didn't like thematically much about this film there is like some nice mirroring in the sense that it sort of ends with him learning that the most it's more important to like spread or tell his dad's secret whereas the first film was all about him like not like the the dad like trusting him to not tell anyone the truth whereas this sort of ends with him spreading the viral videos and telling the world about his dad so there's some like you know nice book ending there yeah, I thought, um, you know, that reminds me of some, some other stuff. Well, I, I liked, but I also had a problem with, <laughs> which is the um, every now and then it will cut to old footage from yeah. Unbreakable. And some of that, I think well, I, one of them at least is a deleted scene that we, that we hadn't seen before, pretty sure. And I, uh, that was cool. I like seeing that. And, and it works as a flashback. And that's the original actors at that time. Yeah. That's cool. But then other times it made me realize how much better yeah, I had the exact un- Unbreakable same is. Like yep. e- even in those, even in a couple of shots, you just remember how how beautifully shot it was, how good the performance are, how yep. it, it makes sense in its own little internal world, and um, so that that was sort of a negative to that, I suppose. Yeah, no, I would agree with that. Um, that I guess that is also there's like a slight third twist that you realize you learn that Elijah was also kind of responsible for the beast in that it, her, his mother or whatever was on the train, the same train. Yeah, that, his father. Yeah, His father, sorry, was on the same train yeah. that um, mm. David was on, which I didn't like, <laughs> but, you know. Yeah, yeah, I, I didn't think that was... Yeah, that that that, um, that is something that retroactively slightly taints the first film as yeah. well, I think, just knowing that. Um, visually, just purely in terms of, like, trickery, it was impressive how they stitched the footage together mm. I thought. showing him sitting down and pulling back to the original kind of opening of unbreakable I thought yeah. that was, you know well, well done even though i didn't like the idea yeah that was that is the shot in particular that reminded me how good unbreakable was where they like it opens with that like the kid or oh. that's looking for, like yeah between the seats and it kind i love of that opening and it just and goes forth. for so long yeah, it's great yeah how how it how it oh, how can, <laughs> Why is he still like that? I don't get it. Yeah, so. I, I wonder if we did some research, Matt. Like there was some producer or partner that he doesn't work with anymore. And that person was like, that was like really good, good at giving notes or something. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I would love to know. It feels like something like that happened, right? Because 
he just doesn't sort of do that stuff anymore. And that was like his signature kind of style was like really slow, you know, takes of stuff. And yeah, yeah, it's bizarre. It's we get like maybe that. two of them now instead of like a whole film's worth. Yeah, it is very strange. Very, very strange. I guess uh, yeah. one of the big things that we touched on in the previous section before we got into spoilers was just the comic booky stuff. Um, oh yeah, I didn't like, want to talk about this. Yeah. It, in Unbreakable, I always disliked the notion that Elijah sort of th- took comic books literally, but I all that was such a sort of small part of the mm. overall plot, and I kind of you know explained it to myself as more of like an internal like metaphor and he part of his kind of like quirky personality in a way and yeah. not and not like fucking you know issue one of superman is literally real it's just like this notion that stories have always had people with extraordinary abilities that and it's been passed down yes. since like yeah. the beginning of time. And it, it used to be gods and stuff yes, and now totally. the way that we do it is And I kind of like that yeah. that idea. Yeah, Whereas I, think I feel that's like a good idea. This like glass leans so hard. It's like comic basically comic books aren't like fucking literal texts of the world. Like they go to yeah. do research at a comic book store. Like it's just stupid. Yeah. Like that that yeah. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. And it, it is, it, yeah, it's weird that there's a couple of scenes in this movie where characters go to comic book stores oh. and like, f- figure something out. Yeah. I don't quite get what, 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 what he's even trying to say there, you know? Exactly. Uh, because that's, it doesn't gel with what we just said, which is that they're, they're new myths and, or new mythologies, but just in a different form. Yeah. In, in this movie, they are like literal. They, they, or they have a line like, Oh, did you know originally Superman, like in the first issue, he doesn't fly or something like yeah, that. Meaning exactly. like, oh yeah, it was, it was based on a real guy. Basically, <laughs> yeah, it's so stupid. <laughs> yeah. It just doesn't, uh, yeah. And so I think the comic book stuff in general doesn't gel very well in this film. Um, from, you know, I haven't seen Unbreakable to be fair for a few years, but I've w- watched it a lot um, growing up and um uh, that seems a lot more cohesive to me and mm-hmm. I guess was written before I think we, we maybe we talked about this in the trailer stuff I can't remember it was written before comic Peak book movies comics, exploded yeah. yeah and we're in the middle of that now which is another reason why this could be could have been so great yeah as as sort of the anti um, Marvel film let's say uh, but this uh, I feel like this this movie is in the same world of unbreakable meaning like it's explain it, the way it explains comic books is like no one like we as the audience don't know what they are yeah. does that make sense <laughs> yeah. you know like like they're still sort of some offbeat thing yeah, yeah, yeah. um but we, we're just we're drowning it's in just stuff. exactly like we, yeah. we, know, we know the story beats you don't have to say and I, you know, I know it's sort of like a meta thing that he likes to do, but you don't have to say this is the big finale. And then like he, Elijah's mom says, like, I thought you said this was a special edition. And he's like, no, oh. it's an origin story. <laughs> it's so like, bad. don't say it. You don't have to say it. <laughs> yeah. you know, that, that is like, he wants it. He wants it to be a film where it's like subtle and brooding. And I trust my audience because they're intelligent. But, the, but he's also really actually scared to hand that over to the audience. Yeah. So I think he pounds it in there a lot of the time and has characters just like explicitly say things. And I, I just find that stuff cringy. Yeah, no, I completely agree. It's just, yeah, it's all very silly and ham-fisted. It's that, and that's kind of uh, links back to what we were saying earlier, just about tonally, how this doesn't feel like tonally the same world as Unbreakable. I mean, it feels tonally the same as Split, more so. Um, mm. And it just... It, it, it really makes me wish that he'd never done them, you know, like it, 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 it and it, it, like I said, it retroactively ruins Split for me. Like that moment in Split when I found, when it was revealed that it was a secret sequel was one of the best moments I've ever had in the cinema. Like literally, I've never experienced that emo- surprise and emotion before. And now it's just like, it's kind of tainted, you know, like it, it yeah. now it feels like stupid and tacked on because the worlds don't really mesh. And then knowing that it just leads up to this, it's like, ugh, you know, yeah. <laughs> what a, what yeah. a disappointment. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, no, I, I think you're right. Uh, it, Split should have been just its own little thriller. Yeah. Um, which it was for 99% of the movie. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, you know, uh, we, we obviously sound very negative and I sort of started this review by saying I admire him for just going for it. And I, I still believe that, you know, I think there's just no one out there for better or worse like yeah. M9 and, and his just crazy career that he's having, the baffling choices he makes <laughs> with stories. But um, he is he is doing what he wants to do and it's his vision and he's not copying trends or anything like that. And so you've, mm. I've got to give him, you know, credit yeah. for that. Even Definitely. if this time around it really is a bit of a failure. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. also... Uh, no, sorry, actually, you go. No, no, I was just going to agree, so you go. This is just left of field, but I, I just remembered too. The uh, the score was not very good in this, and they didn't once bring back the unbreakable theme. And yeah, I, I know odd. it's like, it's a different composer in the rights are a little murky between Disney and Blumhouse. Disney uh... owned Unbreakable, Blumhouse owned Split, and it's a co-production. Um, but I thought for sure, like we would get it at some point, but I, I think it flirts around it a couple of times, but it never fully commits, which yeah, is really odd strange. because the end of split, they end yeah. with the score from Unbre- Unbreakable. So that is very yeah. odd. That's just an oddity. Overall, would you recommend people go to see it? I get this at the end of the day, though. I suppose if you're listening to this, we've just spoiled it. So you presumably have already seen it or do not care. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You do not care. I mean, maybe you'll be curious if you haven't seen it. And I, I would say if anyone has seen Unbreakable and Split and and is curious, why not? I mean, you might as well see it. Um, yeah. But I would not recommend these three movies to anyone fresh. Yeah. Uh, I, I, would, I would recommend Unbreakable on its own because that... Is, has a clear end as well. It doesn't leave you on a cliffhanger or anything. I'd say just watch that and never watch the other two. Yeah. Uh, which, you know, sucks because we were excited for this, but yeah. that's the way it goes. Yep. No, I completely agree. Thanks for listening to this spicy episode of the pre post film review. I don't know why I said that. Uh, we'd love to hear what. It- you guys thought of Glass, were you uh, disappointed like me and Matt, or did you find it um, a satisfying conclusion to the trilogy? Uh, as always, I think we say this a lot, I'd, I'd like to hear the opposite viewpoint, um, mm. because you and me are normally on the same page, Matt, and I'd like to hear like a spirited defense of why this film is um, good to someone. Yeah, um, definitely. Anyway, you can email us at prepostfilmreview at gmail.com. And, um, yeah, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, yeah, that'd be great. Um, you can find us on social media as well. We're on Facebook. Uh, you can comment and chat to us on there. We have a Twitter account, at PrepostFR. Um, links to both of those will be in the show notes. Uh, the most important thing, though, is to subscribe. If you could subscribe on whatever platform you're using to listen to us on right now, that would be fantastic. And if you like the show, leave us a review. That would be really lovely. Uh, you can also find me and Matt over on letterbox.com or on the Letterboxd app. You can follow us there. There's links in the show notes to our profiles. Um, and you can check out what other films we've been watching and um, set up a little profile for yourself as well. Uh, and we'd love for all of you all to join us next episode. We're going to be talking about uh, another third film in a trilogy. Yeah, true. Uh, p- presumably the last in this um, series. Uh how to Train Your Dragon, what is the subtitle? For Something that film? about a hidden world, I think. Yes, I think you're right. Uh, and that film is How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World. The Very excited. final in the How to Train Your Dragon series. And yeah, I think I'm really looking forward to chatting about that. Our, our last, our, pre, our previous dragon review was, um, I remember, a really uh, fun episode because we were just gushing over how much we loved it. Yeah. Those, those films so, are great, like much better than they have any right to be. Those had a train. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. So high expectations for that one. And um, yeah. yeah, look forward to that. Cool.
Welcome to the Pre-Post Film Review. I'm Matt Stevenson. And I'm John Asquith. Welcome... Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> I was basically oh, going to say, welcome to the Pre-Post Film Review again. <laughs> <laughs>